Good morning, everyone. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're in the third Sunday of Lent, and we're contemplating the book of Zechariah, where God encourages people to live confidently as his very own. They have recovered, but they're still languishing through their sense of identity as God's people. So there's much encouragement which we can find for our lives today. This past week, our church's preschool uh, director uh, forwarded a video to our staff, and we were shocked. In there, she was looking uh, at uh, the picture of our shed in the back of our preschool, and there it was dripping water, there was an open compost bin, and oh my goodness, I could not imagine the stink and the smell because it was flooded. Not just the floor of the shed, but also even the compost bin itself. And uh, going through this, uh, I was thinking, that is a bad way to finish off the week. Who is going to take care of this? Who is, uh, and of course, you know, like a, it's almost like priority going through, list going through my mind, all right? You, you got um, the leaking shed, but uh, who is actually going to take out of this type of trash? Um, granted, you know, we you know, we have the blessing of trash can lids, but this one's filled with water. And, uh, you know, go, what's going on? Well, the preschool director and I commiserated because, uh, you know, taking, being uh, in positions of leadership, uh, there's so many things to manage. There's like uh, the people uh, skills, uh, but there also is taking care of the property. So whereas we're thinking, who's going to take care of this? Who's going to help us fix this issue? This reminds me of the unfinished business found in the book of Zechariah. In the very beginning, uh, in Zechariah's time and place, the people were called to actually rebuild the temple. That was the purpose by which they had the blessing to go back to their homeland, the one that has been ravaged by war and, and slavery and destruction. And so there, uh, the people were just trying to get by day by day. They were uh, you know, surviving, but they were not really really thriving in that sense. And uh, there's always so much uh, reminders of how life was like in the past. They know that there's a call to live as God's people, to rebuild the temple, to have their sense of community. But, you know, as they're going about their business, uh, they see uh, the wood, uh, the untouched, and, and they think about, like, who is going to drive this reconstruction plan? Uh, they still know what it was like back then in the glorious time of King Solomon and his temple. You know, as they see just stones, they could see the contrast. It is nothing like the awesome pillars uh, which were found in Solomon's temple. Uh, the cedars of Lebanon, the beautiful lumber, there was no, we don't have gold to decorate God's temple. We have no more precious jewels. Uh, so why would God, um, you know, want anything of us, right? Why bother? Things will never be the same again. And so the people continue living with that mentality uh, for like over 10 years. In, in the history and span of, of Zechariah's time, it took them 20 years to actually rebuild their temple. At the heart of it all, this was about God's unanswered call. Why did God free them from exile? Why did God welcome them back? It is so that they can live as his very own. In the book of Zechariah, in the very first chapter, verse 3, lays it out why God would call people to be more than who they currently are. It says in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3, Therefore say to them, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. And this is where God says, Remember your forefathers. Remember how they sinned, how they suffered, but more importantly, how they repented. So therefore, live as my forgiven people, one who have been redeemed and removed from sin, and rebuild my temple. Return to me, and I will return to you. This was the call which God gives to you and me today too. It is continual. 
that God is seeking for the people in this world to change their hearts and to return to him. And what I see ready here is that, you know, yes, there is external work, rebuilding the temple, and it goes along with internal work, the renewing of people in this world to be God's people. The external work and internal work have to go hand in hand. And so this is why I see God giving Zechariah this, these, all these visions in the first part of the book of Zechariah. There are sequentially eight different types of visions and all this Zechariah sees what God is doing for his people. If you join us last week, uh, we talked about vision number four where Satan accuses, but the angel of the Lord silences this accuser. And this angel of the Lord removes the high priest's dirty robes and gives him a white robe. This is what God is doing for his people to, so that they can live as his. Today, we are going to look at a seventh vision, and which is more fascinating. This is the woman in the trash can. In the book of Zechariah, in our reading today, we have this vision from the angel given to Zechariah of an ephah. An ephah, uh, it's a unit of weight. Usually we say it's a bushel's worth. And supposedly it's about this size. All right, it's, it's not huge um, and it's not super tiny. But here in this vision of an ephah, uh, Zechariah is called to see what happens to this ephah. And there we find a woman inside this trash can. And this is what the angel of the Lord said to Zechariah. What is in here is the iniquity in all the land. All the people's sin is actually found in here. And when the lid is open, they actually find a woman inside. This is what the angel says. This is wickedness found in our reading today. And what does the angel of the Lord do to the woman inside this ephah? His, he actually puts the lid back on because it stinks and he throws a lead weight on top. Have you ever had a chance to enjoy the smell that wafts out of a trash can? It stinks, right? Uh, so I know like my wife, you know, she came to a point where she said, you know, I think I'm just going to like scrub out uh, the, the, the trash can, you know, and I kind of told her, like, you know, maybe it's just my guy's perspective, is not worth the effort. You know, you can bleach all you want. You can spend, you know, like uh, your, your bleach and some extra, you know, uh, you know, strength to scrub it out and, you know, hose it off. But week after week, the stench will come back. But what we have in God's Word today is this vision of sin. It is the people's sin in the land. And what does the angel of the Lord do? He puts the lid back on. Uh, this is a personification of this is wickedness. This woman in the Bible usually describes wickedness like a woman, right? Like one who is a prostitute who lures men into deeper troubles. But I want to, of course, throw this disclaimer here. Please do not take this as a bias against women, or and it is not a bias against men who are enticed away by wicked women. This is sin in each and every one of us. In the original audience in Zechariah's time, they know that all have sinned and fallen into idolatry. Back then, uh, there are moments in the history of God's people where they had rulers, both male and female, who were uh, far away, their hearts were far away from God. So one of them, King Ahaz, promoted child sacrifice. Another, Queen Athaliah, promoted sexual worship in God's temple so the land would be fertile with crops. People, they worship God with empty sacrifices and unchanged hearts. And this is the vision which the angel of the Lord gave to Zechariah. The people's sinfulness, their iniquities, the, and, uh, even, and the wickedness known as a woman 
will be put into an epha, a trash can, with a lead weight put on top. It'll be contained. And what happens with this trash can? There is the second part of this holy vision, is that there are two women with wings like storks, right? They have these strong birds who are known to fly far, far away. And they take this trash can and they lift it up from earth, up through the heavens, and the angel of the Lord says, this will be taken far, far away, back into this land called Shinar. And Shinar is um, the one name known for the land of Babylon. And so when the people of Isaiah, um, Zachariah's time heard this, I'm not sure what they were feeling, but I could see God definitely is doing something and encouraging them about their situation. God will take their wickedness, their sinfulness, their, their filth, their stench, and they remove it far, far away from them. First thing to, we have to kind of, you know, let's just kind of settle down a little bit and think about is that sin stinks. Right? And you know this uh, because uh, when you throw away your trash, you know, every week, uh, for those of you, you know, who are taking care of little babies, you know that their uh, you know, filled diapers stink too. Sin stinks. And we have, to be, uh, we have to be aware of how much it affects our lives. Unfortunately, we don't. You know, uh, the, this past week, uh, my, one of my you know, friends told me, have you, have you heard that story, you know, the, the scandal? about this uh, one pretty uh, famous pastor who had died. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, there were accusations of sexual scandals in his life and uh, cover-ups. And there was an investigation. And sadly, they found out that, uh, you know, all these uh, accusations were actually true. Uh, so this pastor, uh, even though he is, uh, you know, respected and has done, uh, said many wonderful things uh, to encourage people to grow in the faith, um, sadly, you know, uh, you know, even though he has passed away, you know, uh, his name now among our, you know, uh, still on this earth, his name now bears a stench in people's minds. And there's so many things that uh, angles of looking at the situation and um, first and foremost, uh, I would definitely encourage you, you know, like, uh, you know, pray for the people who have been hurt by this pastor and his actions. Even though, uh, you know, like, uh, there is nothing which we can do uh, in this world to uh, exact, you know, like, uh, you know, justice, right? Uh, what I say is, let God take care of that. But the people who are still living here uh, and alive, uh, we have to, you know, pray, you know, for their healing. And, and pray for God, you know, to, you know, bring about justice in their lives. But what I see particularly in this one incident is that now, you know, it's going to be pretty challenging to try to reference uh, that pastor or his sayings. Uh, you know, I've heard that, you know, even like uh, booksellers are like taking his items off their, you know, um, uh, off their storefront, right? And so what I see here is that truly, sin stinks. And if anything that, you know, I can see from this, uh, this legacy now tarnished uh, by this person's interactions is that sin disqualifies our works. No matter how good they could be used, you know, um, or the things which you've done in the past, when our sin is, is let out, you know, it, it stinks. And so therefore, we have to come clean before the Lord. And so I definitely encourage you, you know, we're now in this season of Lent and we're taking a journey through God's word. Um, and we, we invite you to be in prayer, you know, for, you know, for us as a church um, and in prayer for your own relationship with God too. One question, which I hope that you would consider uh, for the season of Lent is what idols will you be willing to call out in your life? What idols are you willing to be called out in your life? Because this is what happened in um, Zechariah's vision. You know, this, uh, the angel of the Lord said, here 
in this trash can contains all the iniquities of the people and they gave a personal name, wickedness. Idolatry is wickedness. Our sin is wickedness. Garbage is the best way to describe idolatry in our lives. You know, and uh, one uh, you know, pastor which I highly respect, you know, he always encouraged us by saying, you know, there's so many good things in life uh, which God intended for good, but because of our sinfulness, we fall into a temptation where we would make them more important than what they are. It could be things as, you know, like, uh, sexual pleasure, or it could be, you know, our, uh, you know, things of enjoyment, you know, like, um, or it could be, you know, the money in our lives, or it could be how people see us, or how we see ourselves, or how we see, uh, how we ought to interact as a community. All these things are good, are God-given, but when we make it more than what they are, then this is what he says, our affection turns into adoration. And so therefore, uh, what is a like becomes a must in our lives, and that is something which we all need to be mindful of. So during the season of Lent, encourage you, you know, what idols are you willing to call out in your life? And know that this is the gospel that comes from this heavenly vision, is that, you know, in that vision, um, these two women who could be angels or holy beings, they take the whole thing and they move it far, far away from God's people. They take it back to the land of Shinar. The land of Babylon. And, uh, and uh, this is, uh, you know, th- there's a great question that I, you know, comes to my mind when I read this, is who can do that in our lives? Who can totally take our sinfulness and our idolatry and take it far, far away and back to where the place where it must be? This is what it says, you know, in, in our reading today. When Zechariah asked the, you know, the angel, of where are they taking that basket? In verse 11, it says, He said to me, to the land of Shinar, to build a house for it. And when this is prepared, they will set the basket down there in its place. And when I read this, I find great comfort. Because what God is, I think God is saying here is that idolatry one day will be put back in its place. This is the removal of sin in our lives. The, the imagery of Babylon, you know, struck the heart of people because they never want to go back. They never want to go back to a place of exile and slavery, to, uh, of, of suffering. And this is what God promises that he will do. This is the encouragement that was given to Zechariah to be shared with God's people. Their iniquity, their wickedness, we far removed. It will find its place far, far away from where they are right now. And so when I think of this, uh, I, find it, uh, I find comfort because the wickedness is thrown away. But who is not thrown away? God's people. God's people are not thrown away, but they're actually separated from their sin, separated from their affections, which become idolatry. And that you know, leads to a huge mess and stink in people's lives. There's a saying that... Uh, you know, there's, a, I guess, an American saying, an idiom that says, don't throw out the baby with the bath water. So, you know, uh, you remember, uh, for any of you who are moms and dads, and, and you remember taking care of your little babies, you know, and, and they had got their little baby bathtub, you know, you're washing the, the filth away from them. But you're not throwing your child out with your bath water, right? And this is, and that is how God, you know, does not treat us in the same way. God what he's doing for his people, which we cannot do for ourselves, is remove our sins. This is where, you know, uh, you know, in our New Testament reading, in the Gospel reading, in John chapter 1, this is what John the Baptist said about Jesus. In John chapter 1, verse 29, he says, The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus embodies this Old Testament vision 
given to Zachariah. We know God has a deep hatred of sin. He has a jealousy for our hearts. And that is settled by this perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of this world. So, you know, Jesus is not, he is not like, uh, first of all, remember, this Old Testament is a vision, not a prophecy. Jesus isn't there to fulfill this prophecy, but Jesus embodies what it means to take away the sin of God's people. He is the one who is that perfect sacrifice. He is the one, you know, he is basically the garbage man. He is the garbage man. And we know that, you know, if we have this filth right, in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, uh, this baggage, this stink, then what does God's word say? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. Connecting to this Old Testament imagery of sacrifice and, and forgiveness and renewal. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says this, And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. So I want to encourage you uh, for through these passages that Jesus Christ is that perfect lamb. He is the one who is able to uh, remove sin from our hearts, remove the stain and the stench, and so we need to cling to him. We need to go to him. We need to turn to him. We need to trust in him. We need to be like the people in Zechariah's day. Be confident that because our sins are forgiven, we can live as God's people. This is all given by a compassionate God who loves us and knows that, yes, we continue to sin every day. We will always be imperfect, but because we have a perfect Lamb of God, as our risen Lord and Savior, then we can live as his people. So I want to encourage you for the season of Lent. Trust that Christ's perfect sacrifice covers your sins and that you can, with a heart of repentance, return to God. There is no sin which God is not willing to forgive. There is no shame which God cannot remove from you. Of course, God calls us to live proactively, to struggle against sin, to, but to know that he can take it away. He enables us to live humbly as his people and to live sacrificially to love those in our lives. So may the vision of Zechariah bring encouragement to you that one day we continue living and knowing that God will end all of desires which are not pleasing to him. He will remove it far away from us and he will make us live confidently as his people. May God bless you in his word. Amen.